are these people? So as we said, as I said earlier, um, Monday was tax day. So hopefully mm. all of you paid your taxes. Um, but you might be wondering how much of your money or how much of your taxes actually go, go towards the things um, that I would think you would actually want your taxes to go to. Um, mm. So we're going to take a look at that a little bit later. Uh, giving some numbers um, to give us some context. But obviously, as you probably guess, we spend a good chunk of our your tax dollars go towards war, uh, especially the wars in Ukraine and Gaza right now. Um, so what we're going to do first is we're actually going to listen to, didn't even know Al Jazeera had a podcast, but they have the podcast called The Take, uh, who is hosted by, I guess her name is Natasha Del Toro. We're not mm -hmm. going to listen to the whole thing, but this will kind of give a little our toes wet into the money that your money is going to towards the military. And we're going to get break it down a little bit more in terms of numbers as far as how much of your money is going towards war versus other things. How does, how does so, Tupac put it? Got money for war, but no money mm -hmm. for the poor? Something like that? Something like, yep. Okay. Um, so, so this is just a uh, an audio podcast. We're not going to listen to oh. all of it. Um, but again, this is Natasha giving it a little, some insight into how much of your money is actually going towards war. So, okay. off you go. Monday is the annual deadline for many U.S. residents to pay their taxes. Do your own taxes online with H&R Block, and tax season will feel just as good as all those other seasons. It's taxes day! Like holiday season. It's the oh, God. In the U.S., taxpayers are responsible for submitting their own tax bills to the government. Those taxes can fund things like national parks and health care, but they also go to the U.S. war machine in amounts that are making some taxpayers angrier this year in particular. How the hell do we practice war tax resistance? Help me. I don't want to go to jail. Girl, we just don't pay it. We being defiant, we being disobedient. And what we ain't gonna do is fund genocide in 2023. Adding up where those tax dollars go are people like Lindsay Koshgarian. I'm the program director at the National Priorities Project at the Institute for Policy Studies, and I'm in Northampton, Massachusetts. Hi, Lindsay. I'm so glad you're, you're here with us today. We know that taxes are due on Monday, April 15th. And as we watch the U.S. give billions to fund wars in Ukraine and Gaza, we can see some of how much of that hard-earned money Americans are giving to these war efforts. $75 billion. That's about how much aid the U.S. has committed to Ukraine since the beginning of Russia's bloody full-scale invasion. The U.S. provides about $3.8 billion in aid to Israel every year. And since World War II, the U.S. has provided more foreign aid to Israel than any other country. What do we know about how much the U.S. war machine costs? Yes, so as you said, the, the U.S. war machine is enormous. Um, the military budget in the U.S. is pushing close to a trillion dollars these days, but it's really hard for most people to wrap their head around numbers like that. What is even a trillion even? So every year we do a tax receipt that shows people where their income tax dollars are going. And what we found this year is that the average taxpayer is contributing more than $2,900 to the Pentagon, and more than half of that, or over $1,700, is going specifically to the Pentagon's corporate contractors. So that's more than the average monthly rent in the United States. Wow. All war efforts put together, we would calculate all of the U.S.'s militarism, both abroad and domestically, so including incarceration, including deportations, including all of those things. If you total all of that up, it comes to over $5,000 per taxpayer. Oh my gosh, those numbers are are really staggering. Um, and how do they compare what to money that? for other pro- 5,000 per taxpayer? Yep. Okay. 
That's how much each of you individually is spending on war. On average, yes. On average. So some of you might be spending more than that. Um, you know, one. Programs then. I mean, how would you break down the rest of where one tax dollar goes? Yes. So the U.S. is number one in military spending. We are number one in selling weapons around the world. We are not number one in almost any of the categories where you would want us to see us come in number one. We're not number one in terms of lifespan. We're not number one in terms of health outcomes. We're not number one in terms of child poverty. So, for example, the child tax credit, which in the U.S. was expanded over the last few years during the pandemic and was responsible for cutting child poverty in this country almost in half. The average taxpayer for the child tax credit was contributing just $110. So the average taxpayer is giving more than 10 times as much for Pentagon contractors as they were for this program that cut child poverty in half. How much more does the U.S. spend when it comes to military spending? I know it sort of outranks, you know, many other countries. Yeah, so the U.S. outspends the next 10 countries combined. So there is a huge gap between U.S. military spending and the next countries. And many of those next countries are actually considered U.S. allies. So it's really just driven by the U.S. policy desire to have the largest and most powerful military and have complete military dominance all over the world. So we're outspending the next 10 countries and that's because we have things like 750 military installations around the world. Wow. And of course, you know, it's one thing to have bases around the perimeter of the United States, but there is no defensive reason for having 750 military installations in dozens of countries. And it's this military sprawl that drives this enormous budget. And of course, we're also the number one weapons seller to the world. So by far, the U.S. sells more weapons to militaries around the world than any other country. If Americans knew how much money they were putting towards, you know, militarism, uh, what, do you, what do you think the response would be? Well, that's why we want people to know how much money they're putting towards militarism, because we know what their feelings about it are. Right now, a strong majority of Americans, more than half, want to see an immediate ceasefire and cease to military operations in Gaza uh, and support an immediate ceasefire. According to a new survey, only 32% Americans say the U.S. should support Israel militarily. 68% say there should be a ceasefire. Obviously, our tax dollars are going towards those things. So it's a significant investment that people are making. And really, right now, it's driven by military aid to Ukraine and Israel. And we know that people are opposed to those military operations. So we can only expect that they would be opposed to their tax dollars going toward those wars. How opposed are they? A growing number of people want to withhold part of their taxes. That's after the break. Ooh. So uh, I will link that podcast. <clears throat> I should have done that. Uh, if you want to finish, listen to the rest of it. It's about another seven minutes. Uh, of that episode. Chat for people. Uh, we'll play in the chat. Um, and then we'll put it in the link description if you, anyone who's watching after this. Um, so let's get into more details regarding <coughs> your tax money. So True. Jake Johnson from Tommy Green. Screenshots. What? Um, what? What? <laughs> Receipts. Proof. Timeline. Screenshots. In everything. Where's that from? I wish I knew. <laughs> some clip from some, like, show. I don't know. I found it and thought we could use it. So Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, Jake reports, uh, average U.S. taxpayer contributed more to militarism than Medicare in 2023 report. This year, $5,109 of the average American's taxpayer dollars want to fund the military and its support systems, said a call offer of a new analysis. The average U.S. taxpayer was forced to contribute 
more, more to militarized programs than to Medicare and Medicaid combined in 2023, according to a new analysis released Tuesday by the National Priorities Project. Published ahead of tax day, the analyst sheds light on the extent to which the federal income tax dollars of ordinary Americans are fueling militarism and its support systems, such as the Pentagon, which currently accounts for roughly half of the federal government's total discretionary budget. Overall, in 2023, the average taxpayer contributed $5,109 for militarism and support systems, including war and the Pentagon, veterans programs, deportations, and border militarization, and federal spending on policing and prisons, according to MPP, which is a project of the Institute for Policy Studies. Mm -hmm. By comparison, the typical U.S. taxpayer contributed $4,308 to Medicare and Medicaid, $346 to K-12 education, $516 to nutrition assistance for low-income Americans, and $58 to diplomacy-related programs. Right now, millions of Americans are struggling to stay afloat. It's becoming so expensive to live, eat, and have a home. Yet, instead of addressing the cost of living crisis or funding measures to address our community's needs, this year, $5,109 of the average American's taxpayer dollars went to fund the military and its support system. Celia Gusero, MPP's outreach coordinator and an author of the new analysis. A far greater portion of our tax dollars go towards militarism at home and abroad and towards harming and separating immigrant families when we should be investing instead in safe and healthy conditions for our communities and our futures, Gusereros added. Last year, according to MPP, $1,748 of the average American's income tax contributions went to the pockets of Pentagon contractors such as Lockheed Martin and Boeing, which lobby Congress aggressively for an even larger military budget, much of which ends up in private hands. Lindsay Kosharigan, MPP's program director, who we heard earlier in the podcast, said Tuesday that it's outrageous that the average taxpayer is given the equivalent of a month's rent to Pentagon contractors. Yeah, more than a month. Right? Big, more than a month, yeah, for some. Yeah. Um, these big corporations are already not paying their fair share in taxes, said Kosharigan. Instead, ordinary people are subsidizing those corporations' profits and million-dollar CEOs' pay packages. Taxpayer dollars should be going to real needs like schools, food and housing programs, or renewable energy, not lying the pockets of corporations. The analysis comes weeks after President Joe Biden signed into law an $825 billion military spending package for fiscal year 2024 that includes... $33.5 billion to build eight ships and allocates funds for 86 F-35 and 40, 24 F-15 EX fighter jets, as well as 15 KC-46A tankers, Defense mm -hmm. News reported. Yeah. Like Last month, Elon's kid's Biden name. What's that? Um, Elon's kid's name. <laughs> oh. Delta AEX. 12, 23, Pi, Delta, um, whatever that kid's name is. Um. <laughs> Last month, Biden released a budget proposal that called for $850 billion for the Pentagon and more than $1 trillion overrides funding, and we reported on that. And you about three weeks ago, I think? Something like we that. On this. Yep. Just like our personal expenses, our income tax payments can change the lives for the better or not, MPP said Tuesday. If we put more funds into education, we'll probably see kids and families better off. If we put more into Pentagon contracts, we'll see their CEOs and shareholders better off, and we'll see U.S. weapons used in conflicts around the world. Yeah. Actually, oh, yeah. let's take a look at this. You have to zoom in a little bit more because it's kind of... Uh, here, let's do, let's just do Big Prez. Let's do that. There you go. All oh, right. it didn't, I in. can't zoom. Okay, there we go. There we go. All right. So, we'll just go over a couple of these. Um, yeah. But the average U.S. peer contributed 
$4,308 for Medicare and Medicaid. Thanks to Medicare, nearly all Americans are older and insured. Thanks to expanded Medicaid enrollment and ACA subsidies, the number of uninsured Americans hit a record low in 2022. And I'm sure that's gone up since then. Versus $5,109 for militarism and its support systems, including the Pentagon and war, veterans programs, deportations, and border militarization, and federal spending on policing and prisons. So essentially, we spend more on military than we do on health care. Right. And not even everyone has health care. All right. So let's go to the next one. 346 for K-8 for education versus 2,974 for the Pentagon, more than half of which went to corporate contractors. The Pentagon budget is set to increase by $27 billion this year. Okay. 516 for food stamps. So again, that's how much you're paying out of your taxes towards that on average mm -hmm. versus 1,748 for Pentagon contractors. Those contractors pay their CEO multi-million dollar salaries at a taxpayer's expense, and their spending on dividends and stock buybacks to further enrich their shareholders rose 73%. So $110 for the child tax credit. Um, and there was some news on this that essentially it's being cut mm. um, versus $249 for Pentagon contracts for Lockheed Martin, the top Pentagon contractor and making of the troubled F-37 jet engine. $58 for diplomacy to end and prevent wars versus $112 to other militaries for weapons and training that feeds conflict and harm citizens. Mm. Just under $32 for substance use disorder support and mental health programs versus uh, $32.29 for federal prisons. This only scratches the surface. State and local governments spend far more on prison costs. $23 for the FAA versus $78, $87, sorry, for Pentagon contracts for Boeing. $14 for wild man wildfire management versus $110 to ICE and the CP CBT, uh, the agencies responsible for separating immigrant families through detentions and deportations. Mm. Uh, just under $11 for energy efficiency and new new renewable energy programs versus $12 for Pentagon and NASA contracts to SpaceX Elon Musk's space travel company. Okay. That's it. That's it. Okay. Cool. So, just to give you an idea of how little we spend on actual things that will help us versus the military complex, essentially. The numbers don't lie, and they spell disaster for you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Short uh, segment, uh, any thoughts? Well, no, I mean, I, I think it's it's good that we know. I mean, 5000 for military contract, great. You know? So, but, yeah, I mean, going to, to Boeing, going to, to DARPA, going to all those things, which we'll get into what those things might be paying for later in the show, for sure. Um, but, yeah. Um, I mean, nothing, <coughs> nothing useful for us. So, you know, send these clips to all the people who complain about having to pay for their, you know, cousins, like food stamps. You know what right. I mean? And the thing is, it's like people complain about student loan debt. That's just one thing that I know off the top of my head right. that, and you know, but look at how much we spend on education. Just on, the, per, per, on average, like $300 of your tax money is going mm -hmm. to education. So, you know, so it's just kind of like, I would personally would rather have more of my money education. And especially if we were to 
eliminate some student loan debt for people, that I'd rather mm -hmm. have my money go towards that. Um, and I think just to kind of get, so I think actually this table is kind of good to kind of get that context for people of how much we're actually just giving, a, well, the government is actually taking away from us in terms of what we, where the bulk of our tax money goes to. So really people shouldn't complain about, oh, like my taxes go towards is trying to uh, alleviate student loan debt. Well, most of your money is going towards the military. Mm -hmm. Right? To give you some perspective of that. So, and a lot of your money isn't even going towards public education anyway. So what's up? Yeah. So, you know, but it's ridiculous to kind of see that instead of giving this money towards things that actually will help people, I think it's good to kind of see these numbers, though, just to kind of give that perspective and just giving the realization that, oh, shit, like, um, it, it, this is actually where our taxes are going towards, and it's not helpful no. uh, at, to us at all. It's helping Israel, though, <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> in terms of the money that our money that is going towards them. And to defend defend themselves, quote unquote, but nothing to help us. No, no help. God, that would that would be nice. They'll never, they'll never help. Um, and not anyway. even that. Just fifty eight dollars for diplomacy. Fifty eight dollars on average. Yeah. So I it's mean, like we don't even care about. <laughs> no. No, if no. we don't care no. about keeping peace, we want. To bomb your ass. That's what we want to do. That's so yeah. just even looking at that, it's and and it's <laughs> pray pray they don't alter the deal further, you know? Like, right. Like that's like, the deal. It's right. It's literally not in our investment for peace. No. Literally not there. No. You know, our money is meant to well, for them to basically start war yeah yep <laughs> i mean makes sense so anyway speaking of money you can you could give us some monies over at kofi at code-v.com slash indie news network in the qr code on your screen or put exclamation mark donate in the chat and you can give us a little super chat that way isn't that nice money please money please <laughs> um and if you can't help us monetarily do these things like subscribe sharing commenting very easy stuff to do you know so please whatever whatever you know um but yeah hit that actually, hit that subscribe button we're, we're actually, getting there me, look at what we're at yeah i think we're too shy of 19 too shy of 19 Two people. Get two people in here to subscribe. That's all you gotta do. 